You know what celebrities are in desperate need of? Humble pie. Because there's some celebrities who just flex all their stuff, you know, do all their stuff on Instagram, do all their stuff on their social media profiles. And I guarantee you, a lot of these people have never had, like, I, don't get me wrong, There's there are some celebrities who know what it's like to not have a lot, but a lot of the celebrities that I've seen flexing and all this and all that, it's just like um, Brooklyn Beckham and... You know, him, like, going on and just, like, trying to be, like, a professional chef for his girlfriend, Nicola Peltz, who is the daughter of a billionaire, and Brooklyn Beckham is the son of Posh Spice and, like, the, and uh, David Beckham. So, mm -hmm. needless to say, neither one of them's ever had to, like, worry about money or worry about anything. And I just see them flexing all the time, and I'm just like, hmm. Must be nice. Yeah, must be, must be. Must be nice cooking pasta inside of a literal cheese wheel as just like a regular everyday like lunch. Yeah, I mean, what? Yeah, yeah he did that. Uh, he did that. I forget. I think it was on Instagram. He posted a video of him cooking pasta inside of a cheese wheel, which the cheese wheel costs like eight hundred dollars for lunch. Lunch. Oh my goodness. I like the Asher's back there making the sound. It's like <laughs> Yeah, he he's hearing us talking about food and he's just like numb. It's like that sounds good. He's like, I wish they'd give me an eight hundred dollar cheese wheel. <laughs> no. I, I need that like, No, because then he he'd would be, be constipated. Even more, he'd be even more gassy than he is now. <laughs> he'd he'd blow the house up. He's just back there like worth it. Yep, yep. Uh but there are some people to be honest, out there. I, I feel that. Like I, I think that's worth it. it. There's some people out there who are extremely humble, in spite of their ridiculous wealth. And it's, see, I like the whole thing. It's like, yeah, if you meet a celebrity, they're just another normal person like you. Well, some of them are. Some of them don't act like they're a normal person. Yeah, they well, take it way too far. But. Keanu Reeves, for instance. Everyone just says he's just a normal guy. Yeah, the he ones just... that act like normal people are the coolest. Yes. I'd love to. I'd love to shake hands, and like, like just go see Keanu Reeves and just be like, "Hey, Mr. Reeves, just want to say, big fan of your work. Keep doing what you're doing, man." Or the ones who act like weird because they don't care that they're famous, you know, and what people think about them, uh, like what, Aubrey Plaza. <laughs> yeah, and Joaquin Phoenix, he's the same way. You know, Hollywood tried to like bury him because whenever he tried to do interviews for like media, he would say the most ridiculous stuff just so they wouldn't interview him anymore. Because there was one he like got interviewed and he was just like, yeah, it feels like I got a bunch of frogs crawling out of the top of my head, <laughs> just, just trying to say the most obtuse stuff to get them to leave him alone. And it, he doesn't go towards fame. He he just likes being an actor. That's it. And I respect that. I respect it. And I know they mentioned one. I saw when we started the video. I got the video pulled up. It started and they were talking about Christian Bale, and. Christian Bale's another example. And I know that, you know, everyone points to the blow up that he had during the Terminator movie. It'd just be like, it'd just be like, it's like, it's like, this is completely unprofessional. It's like, he it, it just, uh, that, he'll never live that down, but it, in time, it like, I, it, for that being the one time I've heard of him being like a little bit out of pocket with like his comments and stuff like that, I mean, I, I, I think outside of that, everything else I've heard has been nothing but just, like, super humble, super cool. And we're here to talk about uh, the world's richest people who live like they're poor. Uh, this is uh, by Sunny V2, and I guess we're going to be checking it out. Yeah, and using Frank would be a great, like, oh, yeah. this video. Just, I want to live like that again in filth and squalor. <laughs> yeah. And fr Frank from Always Sunny, so Danny DeVito. Hmm. And once again, Danny DeVito, that's another person who He's I would love to cool just... people. Yeah. I'd love to meet him and just, like, shake his hand and just be Seems like, dude, like... you're awesome. From what I hear from people who have met him, he's really cool. Yeah. <clears throat> any... Uh, what about you, Kay? Are there any, like, humble celebs that you'd like to... You know, to just... Wasn't Adam Sandler was one. Mm -hmm. We watched another video that he was in. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was the he one where they were pretty cool. Yeah, it was the one where they're talking about they had like no haters and that they just showed him as just regular guy 
walking into a restaurant, just be like, hey guys, how you doing? How you doing, everybody? And just like took pictures with anyone who asked. It's like, dude, that's that's super cool. Is he the one that I heard recently like actually kind of made his movies bad on purpose? Yeah. It's like he kind of just does what he wants and doesn't care what people think. It's well, like, yeah. Because I think I kind of earned some respect for him when I found that out. Well, yeah. It's sort of the Ed Wood, the Ed Wood um, um, uh, paradox because Ed Wood's one of the worst like directors ever, but yet everybody remembers his movies. Like it's the same thing with Adam Sandler. I mean, not to say all of his films are bad. Uncut Gems was great. Big Daddy was really good. Little Nicky. Little Nick. <laughs> Little Nicky's gained a lot more appreciation nowadays than it did back then. A lot of people back then thought it was absolute shit, myself included. Now, I appreciate it a lot more than I, I used to. I mean, back when it came out and stuff, me and Chance were big fans of it. Mm. Especially the soundtrack. Oh, dude, the soundtrack was the best part of it for me. It's like, that was basically like half the songs that Chance gave me on a CD, being like, go listen to this. And I was just like, this shit's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got me into metal, basically. That's, that's kick-ass. Uh, but anyway, we have the world's richest people who act like, who live like they're poor. Uh, let's see what Sunny b 2s got for us. Here we go. Christian Bale drives a 2003 Toyota pickup, while Ikea's founder still flew coach after making 50 billion. But let's start with someone worth 300 million who drives a Toyota Prius, Leonardo DiCaprio. In fact, oh. Leo liked his Prius so much he bought another three for his mother, father, and stepmother, <laughs> not to mention he rather's commercial over private flights believing it's a greener alternative. He's mm. therefore often seen at the airport looking secretive but fairly casual, although he only reaches peak casual when riding his bike through New York City. Now sure, DiCaprio does what? own four side-by-side -side so houses cool. in Hollywood, yeah, but he when David Dobrik met him there, he described Leo as surprisingly normal. Like he opened the door for us and his dog got out. <laughs> so he had to go chase his dog. <laughs> <laughs> like, and that's where you go, oh my God, it's the guy from the Titanic, yeah. and this is the Wolf of Wall Street, but he's here at his house just chilling. And this even extends to how Leo treats his fans. Hmm. I went up to him at a restaurant and his security stopped me. I heard him saying it's okay let him through he proceeded to give me an autograph and we talked for like two minutes absolutely down to earth and no superiority complex at all see, so he's one of those that's given me the vibe that he would be pretty cool you see and i know there's a lot of people who say it's just like well he's always like dating like really young ladies like like from like 19 to like once they get past like 25 he dumps them it's like aren't these women consenting adults aren't these women like like, of the age where they're able to make conscious decisions and all that. Like, honestly, people can say whatever they want about him. I mean, like, is he, like, does, like, I've read how, like, he's been a bit, like, pushy when it comes to some things. Like, trying to, like, when he's, like, on a time crunch or something like that. But outside of that, everyone who's who have, like, has talked about him has just said nothing but glowing things. Like, he's more than willing to talk to you like for just a little bit like if he has the time for it because that's the thing when you're big like this everybody wants a moment of your time and that's and like a million people wanting a moment of your time imagine that how many moments are like how many moments are in a year like 525,600 minutes literally a year and if you have a million people who want a moment of your time dude you're gonna spend like two years trying to get like to know those people personally and it's impossible uh Leo at least tries to live a normal life, but somebody who actually does is Dave yeah, Grohl Dave, from the Foo Fighters. Another person when asked I'd how he love spent to just like 320 meet up million, with. Dave Grohl stated it goes straight into my bank account where it turns all moldy and smelly and he basically <laughs> buys nothing. Yeah. For example, Dave Grohl christened his first credit card with the extravagant purchase of a Benihana dinner and when asked about cars, he'd state I drive a family car. Not a monster SUV, but a family car that fits five people, adding that his Tesla was impractical and the stupidest thing as he thought it was too fancy. Mm. He'd also get rid of his holiday home back in 2017 and now owns only one single Los Angeles property, which he calls a house that's just big enough. Hit I mean, that's a pretty big fucking house. That's a great house, but you I know, wouldn't say that you it could be considered living like a poor person if you live in a house like that. You but know? you have to take into account what all he has in that house. I've seen the recording suite he has in that house. Half of that house is a studio. And he records most of his albums for the Foo Fighters and solo projects and stuff like that 
in that studio. Dude, he took one of the old school desks, like the old uh, Neve desks that were in re recording studios back in the 70s from like Sound City and Van Nuys, and he paid them to break it down and set it up in his house. Old reel-to-reel -reel, like analog recording because he loved the way it sounded. And that's the most extravagant thing I can think Dave Grohl has done, but it's for preservation's sake because that desk was used to record like some of the best albums of the 20th century. And it was just going to be thrown away. Mm -hmm. And he was like, fuck that. Put it in my house, man. I'll, I'll keep using the damn thing. Uh. It add, I don't need even more money, cars, and gold chains. They don't make you happy. And I'd rather be happy than stinking rich. Concluding with the statement, I'm not a banker, I'm a musician. Let's make it about the music. Let's not talk about oh, money. Man. Let's just go have a good time. Dave Grohl is the Keanu yeah, Reeves of rock and roll. <laughs> Talented and humble, which also describes Christian Bale after adding one more word. Frugal. Similar to Dave yes. Grohl, Bale lives in a nice but simple Los Angeles property, although he'd recently announced he was dropping 22 million on 12 separate houses, all of which are going to a foster care charity. Oh, when offered a luxury awesome. villa on the set of Public Enemies, Christian Bale refused with the director explaining he just wanted an ordinary room. Christian is so modest and unassuming, which is supported by one of Bale's interview statements. Wealth doesn't mean anything to me. If a robber broke into my house, he'd burst into tears and it wouldn't <laughs> be worth stealing his car either. That's what he drives around in. 2003, Toyota Tacoma. It's a good car. Never breaks. He's like, I, if uh, someone needs me to carry something, I can put it in the back. Christian Bale's truck has exactly. become a notable Hollywood talking point. I guess people have this idea of Hollywood stars. They're driving like the, the nicest cars. What are you saying? <laughs> the Tacoma's not the nicest car. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm with you, Chris. I'm with you, Christian. Me, as I, the Cobra sits behind him. Oh, like, dude, yeah, as that AC Cobra just, <laughs> oh. oh. A dream car of mine. Damn. Yeah. But I, I agree with Christian. Like, Tacoma, the most practical vehicle I've ever owned, and one that I will keep owning as until the damn wheels fall off of it. I'm never going to sell that thing. I would still have a Supra if I had enough money, though. Not fair enough. That, but that's but I just that's like okay. how slick the 2020 Supra looks. Mm, yeah, they look nice. How about you, Kate? What's the one car that you would... Uh, that you'd get or you would uh, fix up? Um, I don't really, I don't want to talk about it on here. Oh, okay. That's yeah. fine. Anyway. 2006 Tacoma, right? 2003, thank you oh very much. Oh my god. That's yeah. And second hand even then. And while he might have been <laughs> spotted also driving a dusty Porsche, it seems the 2003 Toyota is his go-to daily driver. The joke's on everyone else because he's actually driving one of the best vehicles to ever be produced. Yes, <laughs> thank you. They all his life by stating, I do the exact same as I've always done. I don't have an assistant. I don't drive a flashy car. I do everything myself. I go to the supermarket myself, the hardware store. It's something I would greatly miss because I'd start to feel like a prisoner, which might also yeah. explain why Bale has rejected most technology. Co-star Bryce Dallas Howard said he barely has a cell phone. He's not one of those flamboyant actors that need a lot of people helping him. He and his wife don't have a nanny. They live in a one-bedroom house. They're very low-maintenance, low-key real people. Mm -hmm. But if it's a competition for who can live the cheapest, NBA player Kawhi Leonard might still yes. be the winner. <laughs> Kawhi because is despite making $128 million oh. over for the last three years, Kawhi still drives a, a 1997 Chevy Tahoe yeah. because it runs and it's paid off. The car, which is proudly nicknamed the Gas Guzzler, sits outside his two-bedroom San Diego apartment, although it's at the wing stop just down the street that his frugality really shows. After landing a sponsorship with the company back in 2016, they sent him a coupon booklet for free chicken wings, which he then accidentally lost, apparently leading to a panic attack. Wingstop also seems to be Kawhi's go-to place for autographs, but Ed Sheeran's go-to place for anything is the uh, couch I don't in his blame hometown. him. I would panic if I lost my free chicken wings book, too. I'd be like, no! <laughs> yeah. Well, no! Well, and once again, Kawhi Leonard, like, one of the weirdest, like, NBA players because of, like, how, like, because, you know, you see NBA players, they're, like, out there, they got their chains on, they're, like, dressed in the nines. Him, he shows up, sweats, just like, just like, hey, guys, how you doing? Just normal, everyday dude. That's one thing about Kawhi I've always I've always said is awesome. Nothing wrong with that. Nope. And now we're talking about this dude. 
Town House. Up, he made 775 million from his 2023 tour, but when asked about his bank, he'd state, I use my Barclays student account. I've not upgraded because Seriously? I don't spend much money. If I had all my money in one account, I would spend all of it, so I get an allowance. But when asked about how much the allowance was, he'd give a shocking answer. Maybe a grand. I really don't spend much money. I spend most of it on taxis. Hotels certainly wow. weren't a primary expense, as he'd sleep in Courtney Cox's spare room for three months straight, which might have been a mansion in Malibu, although he didn't need such luxury. I do go to LA every now and then, go to wanky restaurants with people, and I th you know, that is a side of my life, but I also live in the place that I grew up with my wife who grew up there. As mentioned, Ed Sheeran married his high school girlfriend and oh. moved back to their English country hometown with only 4,000 people. Here he keeps up normal working hours. I actually got um, the idea from Eminem. He works nine to five, goes in, does a studio, goes home. And when asked about lavish holidays, he'd state, I'm ginger, so we don't really sit on beaches. I can't <laughs> think of anything less relaxing than sitting getting burnt in the sun. <laughs> no, I just shut all my doors, turned off my phone and watched lots of DVDs, perhaps best Why resonating not? with The Hunger Games, as Jennifer Lawrence is equally normal. Despite hmm. being often cited as the most successful actress of her generation, Jennifer Lawrence stated, I'm in bed by 11 p.m. at the latest. I prefer that to hanging around Hollywood parties at night. Fame Fame or being famous has never impressed me, which might also explain why she refused to upgrade her Volkswagen EOS even after finding initial success. She'd eventually splurge on an equally humble Chevy Volt while <laughs> living in the same Los Angeles townhouse that was bought for less than a million dollars before the fame. She'd state, I was raised to have value for money, to have respect for money even though you have a lot of it, with this respect Fair for enough. money leading to a life of extreme humility. I still look for bargains in the supermarket. Just because you're getting recognized by other people doesn't mean you've become anything special. And according to Ingvar Kamprad, Dang. being a billionaire didn't make you special either. By starting the Swedish furniture brand IKEA, Ingvar built a net worth of $53 billion and in 2004 mm. briefly overtook Bill Gates as the world's richest person. Damn. Despite this, Ingvar was known for driving a 1993 <laughs> Volvo 240, which Nothing he drove around that. his hometown Volvo known for having frugal nice. people. It is in the nature of Smarland to be thrifty. If you look at me now, I don't think I'm wearing anything that wasn't bought at a flea market, and Ingvar was even committed to always flying economy. How the hell can I ask people who work for me to travel cheaply if I'm traveling in luxury? It's a question of good leadership. Best to stay in touch with the real world, although he might have been hell so yeah. cheap that the world lost touch with him. Normally, I try to get my hair cut when I'm in a developing country. Last time it was in Vietnam. Ingvar died in 2018 as the world's eighth richest person, and while Mark Zuckerberg isn't popular with everyone, he definitely maintains the legacy of frugal billionaires. He's currently the fourth richest person on earth with 170 billion, but wears oh. the exact same shirt every single day, reducing decision fatigue <laughs> right. while never making noticed his that. life simple. Now, like Leonardo DiCaprio, Zuckerberg owns five side-by-side -side Silicon Valley houses. Although it's not like they all have tennis courts, the primary residence is nice but fairly normal and is 10 minutes away from the mega mansions in the nearby suburb of Atherton. Zuckerberg owns mm. an Acura TSX worth 30 grand, a Honda Fit worth 18 grand, a Volkswagen Golf also worth 30 grand, and a Pagani Huero worth, well, 4 million. Okay. I was gonna oh, say, I was like, Pagani, yeah. though. I heard, I heard Pagani, I was like, wait a minute. I, I think That's he, not cheap. I think the Pagani just unqualified him for this list. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm safe, comfortable, and not ostentatious. Tyler Winklevoss called Mark Zuckerberg the poorest rich person I've ever seen in my life, although he perhaps hadn't seen Lil Dicky, who made a whole song <laughs> about no. how cheap he was. I was, it was trying to get a little buzz, so I took a little for which he'd make but a I music think video without spending high. a single dollar. The concept of the video is how can I make the most epic rap video ever for no money? He'd therefore visit mansions, boats, and clubs, trying to convince random people to let him use their stuff, all of which being done while wearing the cheapest clothes possible. <laughs> He'd state, you hear a lot of rap songs about spending money. I thought, wouldn't it be funny to make a song about saving money because it's ironic, but beyond irony, I genuinely have pride in saving money. I'm a relatively cheap person who, to me, it's not cool to overspend, it's cool to get a great deal. Within the song itself, Dickie admits to using his cousin Greg's Netflix account, <laughs> getting his hair cut with several months in between, and wearing the same pair of jeans every day, also showing his frustration with how 
how famous music made him. And then, of course, there's Adam Sandler. <laughs> uh, he favors oversized clothes, untied sneakers, and a fresh from the hamper look. His dress style is so casual, it's basically a meme. This man has more money than he knows what to do with. I don't know how with, people can walk around with their shoes from untied, Walmart. though. Love it. He yeah, always looks ready for a basketball to deal match. With. At least, if I met Adam Sandler in real life, I'd give him a pair of, like, the Skechers slip-ons that I wear, just so he doesn't have to worry about the shoelaces. Your mom just caught some of those. Or Vans. Those yeah. would be good. Yeah, Vans slip-ons are nice because according to this interview he loves to turn up and play with random people i fly in try to find a game somewhere play get a little sweat i once played basketball with sandler during lunch break on grown-ups he has an automatic three-pointer and is as down to earth as any famous person i've ever met i can't say enough nice things about the guy i literally go to any park i see a game going off and i go all right they let me let me just walk in i walk up a couple people usually go Oh, that's, that's, what's his name? And then I go, yeah, yeah. And then I get a five on five goal. He isn't scared hey. to photobomb a random wedding, get a standard <laughs> breakfast at IHOP, or eat a jar of pickles while walking down Ugh. the street, despite being worth almost half a billion dollars. There you go. It's impressive to me that he has that much money, considering how, how often people trash on his movies. Well, once again, it's because of the fact that the films make money. Because, here's the thing, you, Adam Sandler had a hot streak of, like, every film hitting $100 million that was so good, it defied all expectation. Like, like no, one has, no, no one has had that level of success in a row. And also the fact that before all of his films, you see the logo for this, for this movie company making it. What's it called? Happy Madison, which is his production company. And his production company, that's the thing. That's where the money is in Hollywood. Actors and directors and, you know, the people who are hired for these productions, no. There's a reason why it's called a production. Because the producers are the ones who make money. The producers are the ones that make all the money and just, yeah, it's... So <sighs> when you produce your own movies, you get all the money for yourself. Exactly. You basically write a check, hand it from, take one hand, take it to the other. Hey, I paid myself. And then pay your friends. Yes, that's right. You've been embezzling money from the company that you all own. So let's just ignore but, this and move on, I guess. Well, that's not we'll blame the, it on that guy. I'll bet that guy, yeah, I'll blame it on that guy over there. No, that's, well, okay. <laughs> that's not how that works, but I guess I, I know. Saying. I'm just, it made me think of the Metalocalypse episode where it turns out they're embezzling money from themselves. <laughs> They decided uh, to blame it on the dead guy that's already t already been killed. So. Yeah. Oh boy. Well. All right. Those are the world's richest people who lived like they're poor. Uh, we hope that y'all enjoyed this, and uh, we hope that uh, I was gonna say, were there any here that surprised you with uh, with like their level of frugality? More surprised me that they were considering. Zuckerberg to be frugal whenever he has a fucking Pagani. I think, okay, <laughs> yeah, that's, well, that's a bit of, yeah. if you think about the, like, how much he has, like, his total net worth. Yeah. Compared to what, like what he spent. What four, four million of that is, I guess that's what he's, they're talking about. Yeah, because if he wanted to, he could get that, uh, that, uh, uh, Konosig, uh, that friggin' ridiculous one that's worth like ten million dollars. Imagine how much the insurance costs for a four million dollar car. I, like, I don't know. I, I mean, they actually showed like there was one, it was a Bugatti that needed an oil change and like uh, and a tire uh, switch up rotation. Well, no, like a full switch up. They were oh. gonna change out all the tires and everything. Um, they had to fly in, like, private engineers from the Bugatti, like, factory to work on it. And the, and they don't, and they're not cheap. The, the car when he bought it cost, I think it was, like, $3 million. And it costs $325,000 
for four more tires, all the you know, oil change and like rebalancing and everything. Mm. Think about that. That's the thing. Mm. These cars, like, it's just like, oh man, I got this car. Cost six million dollars. If I'm buying a car that's six million dollars, I want that thing to never have an oil change. I want that thing to like. Hell, I'd want that thing to fly. Um, have you heard about like in Dubai? Uh, like there's just all these nice cars that are like in junkyards and stuff because they can't maintain them. Yeah, they buy them, but then they can't like. They can't afford to maintain them or whatever. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, I don't know. It, it, it's, it's just. It's insane to think about. I mean, it's they're nice to look at, but they're mm-hmm. not practical. No. If I'm going to Dubai, there's one thing I'm buying, and I I want it to last forever. I'm buying me a Range Rover. I'm buying me like a like one of those things that's basically a tank on four wheels that can run forever, doesn't require that much work, and basically is just able to go over whatever sand dune I want. And, yeah, that that to me is like the more practical vehicle. Or or one of those Mercedes uh, triple, like, six by sixes. Have you ever seen those? Mm-mm. Those things are nuts. Uh, those things tear through the desert like nothing. Mm. And the maintenance on them is fairly easy because uh, they have a... They have a <laughs> compressor built into the vehicle and if you're and if you notice oh hey my wheels uh, lost a little bit of air on the back side uh, driver's side tire Zzz, there we go and it's reinflated <laughs> back up to the proper level so interesting I yeah. wish my car had that oh yeah I'll just keep playing Forza where I have a Bugatti a Pagani and a Kona Sig and I don't have to pay insurance on any of them <laughs> <laughs> yes yes digital in the virtual world ah uh, <laughs> yes well, I mean, in the virtual world, nothing is real, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you uh I did like wreck this it. video because I didn't know that about Jennifer Lawrence. Um, well, like, a lot of these I didn't realize. But, I mean, to be honest, I don't keep up with celebrities. I watch movies and stuff, and I know who they are, but I don't keep up with their Me personal either. life or anything. But this was very informative, I think. I can't hear Jennifer Lawrence anymore without thinking of Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh, yeah, the friggin' uh. It's like, what's your Itadori. type? Itadori. Itadori just. What came. kind of woman do you like? Well, I, I suppose I like a tall woman with a big butt. Sort of like, like Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> Did we just become best friends? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, we became brothers. Yeah. Literally. Uh, that, that was hilarious. Uh, but. For me, I'm just never going to get over the Jennifer Lawrence meme. Where's the pizza? Like, as soon as she's done working on a movie and she doesn't have to diet anymore, she, mm-hmm. she just busts open the hotel door like, Where's the pizza? <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, God. Well, thank you again, everybody, for tuning in. And we hope that you all enjoyed. Uh, so be sure to check out more from Sunny V2 by clicking his name in the title of the video. And until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Kate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. Take care. Peace.